Greetings and welcome to our rainwater harvesting irrigation video. In the next few minutes, we're going to take you through a very exciting project in Houston, Texas, where the owner is capturing the rain off his roof, putting that rain into rainwater harvesting tanks, and then using it to run a automatic irrigation system that's all based on drip irrigation. Additionally, we're going to show you the complete makeover of this outdoor environment with all beautiful new landscaping and a beautiful vast deck in the backyard that covers the rainwater harvesting tanks. First of all, to have a rainwater harvesting system, you have to have a catchment area or collection area. In this particular case, we have the roof. We're going to collect the rain off of the roof. So as the rain comes down off the roof, it enters the gutters, goes down the downspouts, and then eventually enters into the rainwater harvesting tank. But there's a few steps we need to take before we put the water into the tank. First of all, we're protecting the gutters from debris with a product called rain tube. Now once the rain comes down off the roof and goes through the rain tube, and into the gutters and down the downspouts, it now contacts the conveyance system. Now, rain tube is a gutter protection system and it's made from 100% recycled uh, plastic. And its function is to keep the debris, the leaves, the twigs, and any other debris that can get up on your roof from getting into your gutters and going down your downspouts. In this particular project, we have four downspouts with four conveyance pipes that connect together and merge into one pipe that travels to the rainwater harvesting tank. Now there's a, a, another check system like the rain tube. We have what's called an in-ground first flush diverter. That diverter is a device that captures the first five gallons of rainwater and disperses it through a slow drip process so that we can uh, delete all the roof debris that might have found its way through the rain tube, like the squirrel uh, debris and the bird debris and some of the roof grit. The main component, of course, is your tank. You've got to decide which size tank you want. Below ground, above ground, is it a metal tank, is it a plastic tank? There are many, many different types of rainwater systems and all the different tanks that go along with it. On this particular project, we have two 1,275 gallon tanks for a total of 2,550 gallons. Based on the landscape design and based on the irrigation design, this is enough water to water our landscape during the summertime for six solid weeks. We have uh, developed a number of hatches here that uh, allow us to access the important parts of the tank system. And the purpose for having these open hatches is so that we can service the tank. If we ever want to flush it out, if there's ever any sediment built up, we can always go in there and pump that stuff out and start over again. So now we're looking into the hatch that holds all the important parts of the pumping system and the filter system and the connections to the rainwater harvesting tank. We, here we have our Grunfoss MQ3 pump that's, that's designed for this system with a drip system, no more than five gallons a minute. This is a great pump and it's very compact and fits underneath this little cover. Another important component is called a floating intake. This component allows you to collect water just below the surface of the water in the tank, which is clean and won't have any, float, any floating debris on it. Floating intakes grab the water just about four or five inches below the surface, which gives you a nice clean rainwater. This pump is very simple on and off device. It has its own little uh, fill line for when you first need to prime it. The water is coming in on this side and is going out on this side to the sprinkler system. So we're actually pulling water out of the tank and then pushing it to the zone valves of the sprinkler system. 
and all this access is important so that anything happens to uh, any part of this system, whether it be a malfunction of the pump, a leak, what have you, we, we now have the ability to come in and service it. Once the tanks are filled, there has to be a place for the water to go when they're when they're about to overflow and so we have an angled outflow device that allows the water to go out and down into a drain system or possibly into a rain garden if you'd like. Our, our sprinkler system is a hundred percent drip irrigation system. All of the irrigation water is below ground. Even in our grass areas we have tubing that runs every 12 inches parallel to itself to water the root system of the lawn. We also have a similar uh, drip system for the uh, seasonal flowers, the shrubs, and the trees. In keeping with the green aspect of rainwater harvesting, we also want to use a smart controller to run our sprinklers. The beautiful thing about a smart controller is that it, it can automatically adjust the run times, the amount of water that the landscaping needs based on the type of landscaping. The grass gets a different amount of water than the the flowers, then the shrubs, then the trees. And this is all information that you program into the timer. So this all plays a part in automatically adjusting the run times so that you have the right amount of water, not too much and not too little. So we have just really enjoyed uh, putting this presentation together for you we, and uh, we hope you've learned something and we'll uh, continue to think of rainwater as the best source for irrigation. If you'd like to learn more or if you have a special project in mind, give us a call at Landscape Management Services.